John awoke with a start to find his cabin knee-deep with water. The violent motion of the ship had almost thrown him out of his bunk. The steady wind of the night before had turned into a howling North Atlantic gale. Having spent a good portion of his 22 years at sea, the young sailor realized that the clipper was about to sink. Heading toward the companionway, John heard someone above shout, she's going down. More icy seawater came pouring through the hatch. John had started up the ladder when the captain shouted down to him to bring a knife. So one spring morning in 1938, when little silver planes buzzed up the valley over Yangcheng, everybody hurried outside to watch. Most of the village people had never even seen an airplane before. They were still shouting greetings and waving their arms when the Japanese planes began to drop their bombs. At the time of the attack, Gladys was in a prayer meeting with several of the Chinese Christians in an upstairs room in the inn. They heard the scream of a bomb coming in very close by, and then the floor tilted sideways, dumping them into the room below. Countless souls have been led to Christ through her hymns, the lives of millions had been enriched because one little girl responded properly to God's design for her life. My grandmother was to me more than I can ever express by word or pen. When she knew that her little granddaughter was to be sightless for life, she sought to make up for the loss of my eyes by coming to our home, taking me on her knee and rocking me while she told me of the beautiful sun with its sunrise and sunset. The spiritual fruit of his ministries continues to bring eternal rewards to D.L. Moody and to those who faithfully labored with him to reach a city, a nation, and a world. Perhaps the greatest legacy which D.L. Moody left to us is being a living demonstration of the phrase that challenged his life. The world has yet to see what God can do through one man wholly consecrated to him.